What is going on you guys and welcome back to another beautiful day on the channel. Today we got some exciting news. We finally got the exhaust 100% dialed in on this thing and it sounds amazing. And before we start this video, I wanna give a huge thank you to Felix at Felly Built. I will link his Instagram down in the description. He is an amazing welder. His exhaust fab work is absolutely breathtaking. So if you guys watch the videos, you would know that we have the Cobb Cat back and then the full ETS rotated kit with the up pipe, down pipe, right to the Cobb Cat back. And if you guys look at the exhaust tip, now look how freaking mean these things look they stuck out so far and from the top if the car wasn't so dirty you can actually read the cob logos when you're looking down at the exhaust tips now which is freaking sick they are a little bit aggressive from the side of the car they actually do stick out quite a bit but I love it. Then he did a whole bunch of stuff underneath the car as well. We actually had to cut my downpipe two and three quarters of an inch. And then when we did that, the original like extension piece for the downpipe, I guess, was hitting my cross brace for the transmission. So we did have to build an entire new pipe. And this is the pipe I'm talking about here, which is the pipe that's got your mount for your wideband sensor and it mounts up to the little mount on your transmission. And then it's got the two bolt flange to bolt up to the cat back and then the V band for the downpipe. Now, if you guys have been watching the videos, you would know that this did not work at all with my setup and another thing I didn't like about it was that my wideband sensor was actually sitting in this little cheater tube here which means that the wideband sensor isn't completely in the exhaust stream it's sitting out of it so it doesn't really get a proper reading so we just decided to say screw that pipe we're not using that one anymore and we built a full new one so I'll show you guys the unreal work that Felix did to this thing So in that clip, I only showed you guys kind of the crossover pipe, but here is where we cut the down pipe. And you can see his welds there. They're absolutely nasty, even though the camera won't focus. But that's where we cut the down pipe, two and three quarters of an inch. Then he actually welded a new V-band on where the down pipe connects to that crossover pipe. You guys saw the full new crossover pipe that he built. And then it goes down to the new V-band that he put on that connects to the down pipe extension, which he built that whole new down pipe extension. We put a V-band on the end of the down pipe extension, and then another v-band on the actual cob exhaust itself so i just decided to completely get rid of the two bolt flange i was sick of having gaskets i was sick of having leaks every single time i pull this thing apart and the fitment was whack so now we got v-bands on the entire exhaust other than on the cob where it bolts up to the midsection of the cob exhaust to the muffler that's still a two bolt flange but it's okay if it leaks there a little bit because that's where the water needs to drain out of the exhaust but yeah this looks sick as hell i am so pumped on it it brought this cob exhaust to life so much and it even sounds better than it did before so let's get a little cold start going for the boys and then we're gonna wash this thing All right, now that we got her outside, you guys see what she sounds like. It sounds so freaking good. We're gonna get her nice and rinsed off first to get all the dirt and grime off of the paint and all of these bugs off the front end. And you guys can see my nice zip tie job from hitting that cat the other day, which if you guys didn't see last video, I'll put a link up top to that. It kind of sucked, but it did end up finding a couple other pieces of the Toho cover on the side of the road, which is cool. But we're gonna be using this Meguiar's wash and wax hybrid ceramic stuff. I don't really know how it's gonna work, but I wanna it out so we got a nice bucket down here that we're gonna mix this with it says to add 90 milliliters of the hybrid ceramic wash to a bucket and then 15 milliliters of this ceramic boost stuff so let's get her nice and clean and see how this stuff works
god, do any of you guys sweat when you wash your car? Or is it just me? That's a lot of work. But that stuff, honestly, looks like it worked super good. The car turned out super, super clean. There's no streaks or anything anywhere. And this is what I got left in the bucket. There's not much water left in there. And it's pretty dirty. And that stuff leaves like a weird film on the paint. But then when you wipe it down with a microfiber cloth after, it gets rid of the film. And the paint looks super clean. So we're going to have to see you once I get this thing dirty again and wash it again to see if it beads water off like the package says that it will. So I'm gonna get this thing pulled back into the shop now so I can show you guys what we did with our injector wires and what we did all last video with fixing that misfire because I found a couple new things. Okay, fast forward a couple days, because I ended up getting busy and I couldn't finish the video in one day. So I already took this thing out for a rip. And you guys can probably tell because she is filthy. Look at all the freaking bugs on the front end of this thing. That intercooler is caked in dead moths and butterflies. At least it's not a cat this time. Too soon? That might have been too soon. But now that we got this thing in the shop, I can show you guys what I did with the injector wires, which is insane. I didn't even need to take my harness apart because I realized I'm dumb. If you guys saw my previous videos, I'm not going to explain this again, but your injectors all share the same power wire. And I don't know why I totally missed that when I was literally showing you guys the diagram. But since they all share the same power wire and they only have their own individual grounds to the ECU, literally all I had to do was just unplug the cylinder one injector wire and I routed that to cylinder three, plugged her in there, and then routed my cylinder three injector plug to cylinder one, plugged it in there, misfire, fixed. She is perfect now and she hauls titties. It is insane how much more torque this thing makes now. It's going back on the dyno this week on Friday. So for you guys, probably next week and then the week after that, I'll have the dyno video up. But if you guys are seeing this video and you guys have been subscribed for a while, last time we were on the dyno with the injector wires flipped, we made 470 wheel and 418 torque on a Mustang dyno. So go in the comments right now, leave your guesses what this thing is going to make on 94 octane pump gas with the exact same setup we had last time, I honestly think she might break 500, boys. It's gonna be close. And if she doesn't break 500, we might slap some race gas in it, like some 110, 130 octane, something like that. Because I just wanna have a dyno sheet that says 500 horsepower so I can stop getting roasted in the comments. So this is gonna be my first video where I don't have an outro. So I'm just gonna leave you guys here. Enjoy the insane turbo noises this thing makes. This exhaust sounds so good. Just sit back, put your headphones in, and watch because you might catch some flames. Make sure you guys got your marshmallow sticks because this is fire, literally.